Hello everyone. Welcome to this video where I'll talk about the state of Hammer and Title Update 3 of Sunbreak. This was a very exciting patch. Updating all my sets with the new armor pieces, decorations, and the amazing new charm and augment systems was pure joy. A lot of stuff changed for Hammer, it is now stronger than ever. Let's get right into it. The reign of Abyssal Windstorm is finally over. A slight lack of raw, very bad affinity, and a lack of slots is finally catching up to the Gazmagorm Hammer. There are now stronger options for the best strength hammers in the game. The first one is the Abominable Avalanche. Maxing at a gigantic 370 raw with attack augments, the Gus Harag Hammer is now stronger than Abyssal Windstorm, even with white sharpness. Its only downside is that it has slightly worse sharpness management. This hammer also offers a level 3 decoration slot. Cactus Unbetter, the flaming as Pinas hammer, is probably the single best hammer in the game. Usable with both strength and courage playstyles, this hammer is incredibly strong. Sporting good raw, high natural affinity, excellent sharpness management, high element, poison and amazing slot distribution, Cactus Unbetter manages to deal almost as much raw damage as Abominable Avalanche, but has extreme poison damage on top. Regarding the Chaotic Gore Hammer. Ironically, it's the fact that this hammer has too much affinity that makes it bad. I've tried to use this hammer along with almost every raw boosting skill in the game, including Adrenaline Rush, and it simply does not work. It is a gimmick that's really difficult to use and the results aren't even better than the aforementioned hammers. Its minus 30% affinity is also a very big downside. There is a skill in Monster Hunter Frontier that would convert excess affinity into attack. I think the game would benefit from something similar at this point. Strength Hammer received incredible armor pieces in this patch with the Risen Kaiser set. This gives so much skill points as well as Powder Mantle 3, which activates very quickly with Hammer and is equivalent to at least a 10% damage increase. The Astalos, Mizutsun and Gore Hammer are in a weird place. With full attack augments, their damage is close to Goss Hurag if not better in matchups where the monster has a good thunder slash water slash dragon weakness but a low slash non-existent ice weakness. Their main strength is having 45% affinity without bloodlust active. However, they suffer from three big issues. They need investment to max out resentment. They need to keep purple sharpness in order to match Goss Harag and damage, which means they have to use Master's Touch 3 and at least one level of Handicraft. And lastly, that sharpness management prevents them from using Hellfire Cloak, a big addition to Strength's playstyle in this update. You can see on this screenshot the difference in damage. Total damage is Goss Harag on a 5 Ice Hit Zone. Previous combo is Astalos on a 25 Thunder Hit Zone. They are still usable hammers that are very limited in matchups where they will perform better than the Gauss Harag hammer. For weapon augments, use plus 20 attack for the Harag and flaming hammers. You can use plus 10 attack, plus 5% affinity and plus 5 element for Gauss Harag if you need that extra affinity depending on your set. For Courage Hammer, as mentioned, Cactus Unbetter is the king for fire. It is even good against monsters who only have a 10 fire weakness, due to its poison damage being massive. Doomsday Hammer and Flicker Blizzard Blow are still the best picks for ice and water. This patch also gave them a nice bonus with Kushala to War a Blessing. Skyfold Fury Flash still has no competition to this day and remains the best Thunder pick. Dark Mord is the Dragon pick. Again, the Crimson Force Swing Hammer has its niche with gigantic white sharpness, but Dark Mord is stronger and has pretty much the same, if not more, sharpness with Razor Sharp or Master's Touch. For all Courage Hammers, use plus 5 attack and plus 33 element augments.
Silk Bind Spinning Bludgeon is a popular Silk Bind attack on Hammer that got buffed significantly in this patch. However, I will maintain that it is a mediocre move with very long execution that has very few niches like hitting very large vertical hurtboxes, such as Magnamala's back, Ola Mother Narwa, Gazemagorm's large arms, or Athelos' charged wings. Dash Breaker got buffed in that it allows you to always get a level 3 charge after the dash. Unfortunately I have yet to see any usage for this move that isn't already covered in some ways by keeping sway, which is much faster and has invincibility frames. An idea would be to use Dash Breaker to tank through Blood Blight attacks from anomaly monsters, but this is all I can think of, you're still losing keeping sway, one of Hammer's best defensive tools. I'll take this section of the video as an opportunity to talk about Water Strike a little bit. Some people have asked me how exactly I use this move. I'd like to remind here that generally, Water Strike has better synergy with Courage while Keeping Sway has better synergy with Strength Hammer. Courage gets two unique follow-ups when it uses Water Strike, Immediate Level 2 Charge or Strong Golf Swing into Level 3 Charge. It's important to note that Water Strike's parry window starts at frame 10, not at frame 1 unlike almost all other parry moves in the game. Due to its immense mobility and the ability to roll when initiating a charge, especially with the bait extender, Courage Hammer finds itself not using Keeping Sway as much as Strength with the exception of moments where you want to keep a level 3 charge. Strength uses Keeping Sway the most due to its classic charge mechanics and has no such advantages when using Water Strike. However, it can still be used as a way to save your wire bugs as well as not giving up your position by using a roll or keeping sway. Here are my sets. Strength can now reach Focus 3, which is incredibly good at opening punishes that weren't possible before. It can also use Powder Mantle 3, which is a huge chunk of additional damage every approximately 40 seconds. Hellfire Cloak 3 serves as a unique one-time use topple on monsters, as well as keeping Coalescence 1 active nearly all the time. Evade Extender 1 or 2 is useful at allowing Hammer to get out of the way of pretty much all attacks in the game and not use a wire bug for keeping sway. After tons and tons of testing, I can for sure say that Powder Mantle is not great for Courage and that sets like these that go all out on element boosting skills such as Strife are stronger. I do however have one template set for Powder Mantle Courage that I will use on very specific matchups where element exploit does not trigger for example, or monsters who have low elemental weaknesses in general.
Let's talk a little about the new talisman and augment systems. The new talisman system is your open door to getting god talismans in this game. By targeting a skill, you're guaranteed to get this skill, and even at maximum points. While the secondary skill and slots are still random, the chances of getting a god talisman critically increased. I recommend only taking a look at rarity 10 talismans, but if you're in dire need of a just decent talisman, then other rarities are fine too. I obtained extremely valuable talismans with this new melding option, such as attack boost 3, weakness exploit 1, with very good slots. To make good use of the new skills plus augment system, you need to make sure at least one skill point on the piece of armor you wish to augment is worth losing. If none of the points are worth losing, then the best thing to do is to use the regular augmentation option. Using this system merely guarantees you will get among the best skills in the game such as attack boost, critical boost, weakness exploit, bloodlust, in exchange for at least one point on the augmented armor piece. One good example of a very good piece of armor you can augment with this new system is the Risen Kaiser Tassets. They have two points in both Ballistics and Master's Touch, but depending on whether you're a Gunner or a Blade Master, you can augment this piece of gear and wait until you lose one point of one of these two skills, while the game gives you another good skill in exchange. For a while, I've been telling my audience that strength and courage hammer are equals, with each having its unique niche. Unfortunately, the data no longer supports this at all and I have to admit now that courage is much stronger than strength hammer. There are a few factors as to why. Courage can do things strength hammer wishes it could do, such as taking advantage so well of short openings like staggers and exhaust staggers, which are still high even against the strongest, end game afflicted monsters. Courage also highly benefits from the developer's intentions to push the viability of elemental sets in Sunbreak. Courage has access to a lot more skills that increase its damage further compared to strength, such as Elemental Attack, Critical Element, Element Exploit, Charge Master, Strife and Kushal and Deoster Blessings. This is the reason why the majority of Hammer Speedrunners, especially Japanese ones, only use Courage. They consider Courage the main playstyle of Hammer since it is the strongest and the one that nets them the best speedrun times, completely ignoring the existence of Strength as a result. Courage has many benefits Strength doesn't have as mentioned, namely being able to punish staggers, rolling when charging, unique water strike follow-ups, much higher damage, and being generally much easier to use. Pictured here, missing a very big finisher, is something that almost never happens with Courage. Now that I've made this analysis, I have to say that this won't change my content at all. Ever since I started this channel, my objective was to showcase both Strength and Courage Hammers, regardless of which is better, because I'm dedicated to the weapon as a whole. This will continue in the future. Thank you everyone for watching. Hammer is still in a very good spot in this game and is still in my opinion the best designed weapon in the game, if not in the series with this iteration. I'm very close to 4000 subscribers, and I'm very close to 100 layered armor sets. I think I will hold on working on a layered armor video as a 4000 subs special. For now I'm still exploring the new update and recording as many runs as I can. So in the meantime, happy Angabanka.